Hello guys, welcome back to Daily Entertainment Bars right here on Odati GH TV. Please, if you are new here, kindly subscribe to this channel and also click on the bell icon right next to the subscribe button. And also don't forget to also drop your comment in the comment section below. Give this video a thumbs up and also share this video with your friends and loved ones. Hey! How are Hi, you? how are you? Good, 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 good. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. This network, I think your video is kind of really bad. Really? I can see you clearly, though. Yeah, my, my, I, I'm using, I, I tap my, my internet direct from the source. Where's your internet oh, coming okay. from? <laughs> <laughs> can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Welcome to the show, Fontana. Thank you. How's Ghana? How's um, lockdown been? Um, it's good. It's okay. It's the same old, you know. You're killing it in, in Ghana, and I'm really excited to have you on my show today. Ah, oh, thank you so much. I'm excited to be on your show. <laughs> All right. Talk to us. You're listening to, um, we have a lot of Nigerians listening to you. You were born on the 3rd of July, 1997. Yes. Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah. So let's talk about moving from America to, to Ghana. Mm -hmm. Let me say to Africa, because you're you're right now an African artist, not just Ghana. Yeah. Talk to us about that journey. Um, so I've been here for two years, but like back and forth, back and forth. But I've been living here officially for one year, of course, because when I started music, I had to. We lost that there. Am I back? Oh, okay. Yeah, we're back. Can you hear me oh, now? Okay. Okay. <laughs> I think it's the Ghana network. I don't know. Okay. What network are you using? So let's let's put them on. No, no, you can't put them on blast because we don't know who's <laughs> yeah, gonna sign you on tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, sorry. Yeah, so I was I've been living here for like almost two years, but I couldn't um, be living in America and do music in Ghana, so I had to um, make the move and stay here. But when I first moved here, I opened a boutique, a menswear boutique, before I got into music. So now I'm doing music full time. Okay, let's talk about the culture shock. Let's start from there as a, as a build up to um, other questions. When you arrived in Ghana as a very young, so if you've been in Ghana for two years, that means you arrived in Ghana when you were 20. Yeah, but not like permanently, like I was going back and forth, back and forth. Yeah. Yeah, so let's talk about the culture, uh, culture shock. Mm -hmm. When you came into Ghana, like how do you feel like, do you feel like, oh, will I live here? Is this where I want to sing? Is this where I want to perform? How do you feel? Um, so when I first started coming, at first I was kind of like, yeah, it's fun for a while. Like when you come, I started coming during December, like the holidays. And then I start, it started growing on me. So I was like, okay, maybe I could live here. And then I started adapting to it. It's still different and I still struggle sometimes, but it's okay. It's not like that bad, kind of. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about your music. Oh, internet, please. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh. That's why it's so bad. Our network is so, so bad. Hey, my God, please, can you just help me sort the proper network for her? Because it's really blurry here, and then it, it cuts up. Thank you. All right, we'll get, we'll get her back. Um, I think network, these days, I don't even know what is going on. I don't know what's going on, man. Uh, 
Don't worry, we'll get her back. She's here. Let's try again. What's going Hello? on? I don't know. It's not me. It's MTN. Sorry. Don't worry. I'll send. I'll send you. I'll send you. Um, I'll send you data from Nigeria. Yeah, it's. I don't know. It's not me. It's not my. It's not me personally. I don't know. Sorry. Is it better now though? Or. Um. Yeah. Kind of. I don't know. It's not me though. It's not okay, me. it's better now. So as far as we can hear you, that would be fine. God have mercy. This has to work. <laughs> so let's talk about your music. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. All right. Where did you get the name from, Fontana? Oh, so um, when I was younger, um, my family members used to call me Fanta and stuff. But my real name is Fran, Francine. But we yeah. just changed both into Fanta. Yeah, Fanta, Fanta, and then we put Fantana at the end. Okay. And it's a name that it's easy for everybody to, you know, pronounce instead of Francine or Fran. So, yeah. So, you studied business and fashion in school. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, tying, bus tying the business side of your career and the fashion side of your career, going through your Instagram page shows that you understand how to get on the gram and kill it. Of course, yes. <laughs> so, so let's, let's, talk about, let's, talk about, let's talk about that. Business and fashion. So how have you been able to understand the business of entertainment? And how have you matched your fashion with the business of entertainment? Mm -hmm. So, um, of course, I would say with my fashion and the entertainment business, I would say it's my it's a brand. Yeah. So, of course, you, um, I was building my brand, but I also, you know, had to put my fashion sense inside. So, I mean, you know, there's musicians who are known for being best dressed or they know how to, you know, wherever they go, they're always looking good and stuff. So I feel like that is also a big part of my brand. So I just had to infuse my fashion style with my music and then, you know, become Fantana. So, okay. So at what point do you know that, okay, I, could, I am Fantana, I'm, I'm Frances, I, I can sing. And I want to mm -hmm. move to Ghana to sing. I want to move to Ghana. What, when did you start singing? So, like, I've always been able to know how to sing and stuff. And, like, even in church, you know, they would force me to sing in the choir. But I really, I had, I was kind of shy. And then as I started getting older, I just realized, like, okay, I went to school. I'm, like, school's not really for me. And then, of course, I started my own business. But I'm not, like, I'm passionate about business. But my big, my major passion is singing. So I think I just told myself to put my shyness to the side and then I just decided to take it serious and then here I am. All right, can you say can you can you, what what gospel song since you say what gospel song do you know? <laughs> um you know um I know a lot but the words I get them con like the um I know a lot. Yeah, we just we, we just want to, we, we just want to hear that pitch. Give us that pitch. There is a I I know this song uh it's by the rivers of Babylon or something like that. By the rivers of Babylon. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Where yeah. we sat down, down, and then we were. Yeah, <laughs> but the words, you know, like, yeah. A lot of, you know, we all struggle with, there are times where you love songs, but yeah. we all struggle with the, um, the actual words. Tra yeah, the actual words of the song. Yeah. So what was your first ever song you recorded? So my first ever song I recorded is actually not out yet, but it's a song that I recorded bef like to test how like how good I was in the studio because it was my first time ever being in the studio and I had to learn, you know, 
my voice range, my pitches and all those things. So that song is actually not out. It's just there. But it's not the first song that I released. Yeah. So let's talk about investment. So for someone like you, how have, mm -hmm. you, been, how have you been able to invest in your career? Do you believe in yourself so much to, to put your hands in your finances and put in your, uh, in your career? Have you done that? Um, yeah, that is actually what I do. So um, my whole career has been invested with um, my family money. So my mom and my dad invested in me, yes, financially, yes. All right. You know, a lot of, a lot of kids out there, it's been difficult for their parents to actually believe that music is what they want to do, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, years ago, someone like David O in, in, from Nigeria, it was difficult for him to convince his father that right. he wants to do music. Right mm -hmm. now, years gone by, someone like you, you have a father and a mother that support your music career. Mm -hmm. Do you think do you think you're privileged to have had um, parents that have money to support your career? Um, people use that word against me a lot, but I would say it wasn't as easy to you know sit my parents down and tell them, hey, I'm gonna leave America, I'm gonna stop everything in America, I want to move to Ghana and just become a a musician they were kind of like okay you're crazy so I, it took a long process it took actually you know a couple of months almost one year before i even started doing the music for me to convince them and then once they saw that this is what i actually want to do and i was dedicated to doing it that's when they started believing and then they started investing in me from the beginning all right as i see that in music right it's always a very I always don't want to call it anymore the female side of the industry. It's mm -hmm. the entire industry. What position are you trying to take? Um, I wouldn't say, I don't know. For me, I don't like to say I'm trying to like take positions or take a title or something. I feel like I just want to come in the industry, do my part, have my name, let people, you know, know me for being Fantana, for being who I am. You know, maybe if it's the loud, outspoken girl who... You know, and all his songs, you can relate to them. You know, I'm just saying what I feel, speaking my mind. And I want to be, you know, one of the biggest in Africa, of course, and also internationally. Yeah. But, you know, for being me, not trying to, like, take anybody's position or be better than anybody or anything, but just be better for, like, myself. So when, when, you, when you wake up every morning, do you mm -hmm. see tables that you want to take a seat on and you want to do it without letting anyone know? Tables that I want to take a seat on. Okay, tables, I mean, there's a position you want to get to in the music industry. Right, right. Uh -huh. And that position is called a table. And those tables mm -hmm. have chairs. Yeah. Is there a table every morning you wake up and say, you see that chair? Someone is sitting on it. Or that yeah. chair might be empty. If I get there, I might pick the chair before the other person. Are there tables like that? Yeah, so I, right now, for me, where I'm at, I feel like, yeah, the table is there and there's empty chairs. Okay, there's an empty chair, and I feel like that chair belongs to me, and I'm going to take that chair no matter what, you know, yeah. So taking the chair, you know, the most important thing is taking the chair and creating more tables. Exactly. Right? That's also very, very important. Mm -hmm. All right. A few um, weeks ago in Ghana, I had a lot of, oh, let's talk about record labels and <laughs> artists, right? Uh -huh. Um, let's talk about record labels and artists. You were signed to Rough Town Records. Mm -hmm. um, so your own record label is called Midas Touch Inc. Is that yours? Um, no, I'm signed to Rough Town, but I believe I think Midas Touch is a partner to Rough Town. But yeah, oh, okay. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So for the last eight weeks, we've been having a conversation about how we can tie the Nigerian music industry in terms of artists and. Um, record labels how we can build mm -hmm. their relationship in terms of professional ways of working around their artists and also uh, professional ways of, of artists working around their record labels we had mm -hmm. interesting conversations we we've had uh, mr easy on that conversation we had don jazzy we've had uh david o we've had everyone mention anyone that is is top in the nigerian entertainment industry um and we, we, the, the reason why this conversation is really important is because for someone like you striving to become the biggest in Africa, right? We're not talking about biggest in Ghana. Ghana is 25 mm -hmm. million people. Yeah, right? so it's, it's easy to yeah, it's easy to become the biggest in Ghana. Of course, but, yeah. Putting your putting your putting your stamp to become the biggest in 
in Africa is what is that's the goal from a few things you've said. Yes. What do you think are the issues that we can fix between the, with the relationship between an artist and a record label? If you if you were meant to advise people trying to get into that marriage right now, what would be that thing you say to them? Um, the first thing I would say is when it comes to like be an artist signing to a record label, I would feel like you should know what you want, number one. And once you start doing it, I feel like you shouldn't make yourself too comfortable because once you are comfortable, then you start becoming laid back. And music is a business. You know, you should be passionate about what you're doing, but obviously you're also doing it as a career. So when you're doing something, I feel like your mind should just be on that one thing. And you and your record label should know that you guys are just aiming for one thing. And that is for me to become, for me, my record to be the biggest in Africa, we know we have a goal. So there's no time for, um, you know, taking things easy or there's no time for mixing business with pleasure and all those things. I feel like everything should just be strictly business to get where we want to get to or get, yeah. Okay. Nigeria and Ghana, you know, we are actually not neighbors, right? Uh -huh. We don't share the same, we don't share, um, boundaries or or borders but we are kind of very close to each other mm -hmm. right have you been to nigeria before um no i haven't okay I'll, let me be the first person to invite you to nigeria okay. post covid are you ready to come yeah after the borders open and stuff sure definitely yes all right let's 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 talk about the relationship between uh, the, the ghana entertainment industry or music industry and the nigerian music industry we have some people like Sakodie, um, uh, Sakodie. We, ha we have Efia. Um, mm -hmm. We have we have um, Stoneboy and Co. Mm -hmm. They have done collaborations with Nigerians, right? Yeah. Are you looking forward to doing any collaboration with any Nigerian artists? Yeah, of course, of course, of course, of course. Name them. Let's let's go. Let's go up. Well, let's go for them. Um, so in Nigeria, I really love Tila Savage, but I'm sure everybody knows that. And yeah. then, um, I'm, yeah, I really, really love Tila Savage. She's one person I would want to do a collaboration with. And then, um, have you reached out? Gito. Have you reached out to Tila? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, not yet. I haven't. I have not. Yeah, but, um, she's somebody I would say has, I think before I became a musician, she was one of the people that I used to listen to all the time that had, that also inspired me to you know also want to do music as well and then with the male i would say um naira marley zlatan devito whiskey i th i think everyone in nigeria is doing good burna boy everyone's doing good. so have you reached out to any of these people um no i haven't yet i don't know i i feel like i'm still trying to um put myself on a cer um a certain standard and on a certain level before i start um doing those things okay Looking at looking at things in perspective, right? Mm -hmm. Nigeria, Nigeria, Nigerian entertainment industry, right? Um, we have a, we have about two hundred million Nigerians, and it right. will be very very important for 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 a crossover of your music into Nigeria. Yeah, and crossing crossing over into Nigeria will be a big market for the brand you represent, right? Mm -hmm. Now, let me throw this. I am. And it's not something I, I say easily. I think you're one of the most beautiful female artists that have ever come out of Africa. And there are not many. Yeah. Thank you so much. So <laughs> now Thank you. You, you have, you have, uh, you're, you're, you're fortunate enough that, uh, with, with your looks, right? And your persona. With your looks and persona. Sorry, I was reading some. With your looks and persona, I believe that you can take over Africa. So what's oh, the plan? Yeah, what's the plan to take over Africa? Um, you know, there has to, there is a plan, you know. <laughs> it's not just a small plan. I feel like I have to really sit down and really, you know, have a big, big master plan on, you know. But I think right now, um, I think in Ghana, I've done well. Um, you know, when you talk about musicians in Ghana, I'm up there, even though I've only been in the industry um, for less than a year. I think I've done well. So now I need to focus on crossing over to Nigeria, Tanzania, Kenya, you know, all over Africa, South Africa and all those things. So I need to put in more work because I do want to be one of the females in Ghana to, you know, become international. I think, yeah, because in Ghana, yeah, I, that's what I want to do. So. 
All right, let me tell you something. One thing I feel like a lot of African artists, especially Ghanaian, Ghana artists, I'll tell you something. There's a big issue that a lot of Ghana artists have. Uh -huh. Now, unfortunately in Nigeria, we have more artists waiting in line, right? Yeah. We have more artists waiting in line to be played on radio or TV. Now, a lot of your, 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 your fellow artists come to Nigeria. You know what they do? They come quietly and leave. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't think anyone should come to Ni a country like Nigeria if you're an artist. You need to find a way to cause, a, a, a cause problem one place or the other, you know. Just, yeah. You know, just make sure things are happening. Like, let people talk happening, about yeah. you. Now, looking at this, for you, to, for you to build an African brand, this is what I'll tell you. Having, I've been in the industry for like 15 years. And having had artists like Techno, Yaya, Celebobo, and all on the likes, one thing oh. I'll tell you, so build, one thing I, I now understand on how to build an African brand is simple. One, <coughs> excuse me, one, you have to have a manager or a representative in as many African countries as possible. Mm -hmm. like, a, like a country like Nigeria is very key. You need someone to represent you here morning, afternoon, and night. <laughs> Yeah. Someone that, when, if you're not here, the person is pushing the plugs. Because right. I, 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 tell, I tell people, you cannot get out of what you want to be. You cannot become what you want to be alone. Yes? There needs to be a team, structure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, once you put the structure in place, and these days, the internet is easy. You can go on Zoom and have meetings with all your managers across Africa. You can right. go on Zoom and have... So if that structure is in place you'll be prominent in as many African countries without even being there. Exactly, yeah. So now, understanding how that works is also very, very key. Um, you understand how that works is also very, very key for your growth. So let's talk about, let's talk about your music. I see um, you, had, you have a song called The Rich Girl Anthem. Yeah. <laughs> why, why, why that name? Um... <laughs> First, I would say I chose that name because, you know, in the song, of course, it's just talking about being a boss and, you know, doing anything you want to do. And it's not only guys who can, you know, use their money to get what they want. There's also yeah. women who, you know, there's also women who have money that can get any guy that they want as well. You know, it's not only guys that are rich that can get any girl as well. So, you know, it's just a statement song and it's not only about money, but I would say it's like a woman empowerment song. So it doesn't matter whether you're a millionaire, you're middle class, you're anybody could listen to the song and just feel motivated to want to do more. Yeah, motivated to want to do more. Yeah. So what? <laughs> yeah. So what? Um. So what is more of a nonchalant song? I, obviously, like a girl who doesn't care and she's just doing whatever she wants to do and playing around with guys. Because obviously, you know, um, a lot of guys do those things with girls and it's not easy for a girl to just get up and say she's having a one night stand with you know different guys and she's doing whatever she wants to do it's i think it's just like a bold statement song as well so. have you been stabbed before have you been backstabbed no. before yes i have been backstabbed not stabbed but i've been backstabbed yes a lot yeah recently oh yeah 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 no don't yeah. try to be smart <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so is that why you did you did the backstabber um a live session? Um no, so the backstab for the backstabber song, it was just a normal it's just a song about um enemies and people who, you know, you thought were your friends and then they turn around doing something behind your back and people who have hurt you even though you've done nothing wrong to them. So, you know, people can relate to it. So if somebody hurts you then you can, you know, backstabber, yeah. Have you ever have you ever had it in your mind that right? Have you ever had mm -hmm. in your mind, like you want to? You, have you ever had that thought in your mind that, that you want to, you want to leave music? You're tired. Has it uh, ever happened to you? It happened once, but I felt like that was just me being. Spo I felt like that was just me acting spoiled. You know, like maybe because something is getting hard, I'm like, oh, I don't want to do it anymore. So I feel like I have to change that mindset and that mentality because in life nothing is easy. So if this is the only thing I know how to do, I have to just, you know just deal with it and keep it pushing. Girls hit on girls. Yeah. 
Um, that was also another song too. I think it was more for the woman as well. Like, you know, a lot of times the biggest problem is other women hating on their fellow woman for no reason. Maybe you can just see someone and you don't like them and you don't have a reason not to like them. So it was just like a general statement song. So looking at your videos, right? Mm -hmm. your, your videos are top notch. Thank you. <laughs> um, girls hitting on girls, right? Mm -hmm. You think that women support women a lot? Um, not really. And I feel like if they are, they have an agenda behind why they are supporting you. I mean, there is a few genuine people out there who will really support you. But the majority of the time, I feel like, no. We, us as women, I don't know. There's always something. So what, what do you think you would like to change about the industry? We, we, everything you've seen, you've been in the industry for a few, a few just like a year or two mm -hmm. years. Yeah, a year. Uh, a year. And you've made this impact. What would be that thing you want to change? Um, I would say I would want to change the, um, excuse my language, um, like the ass kissing, like people who just suck up to people just because they want something. I feel like everybody should just be who they really are and stop, you know, trying to suck up to somebody or trying to be close to somebody just because it'll make you look a certain type of way. I would, that's something I would really, really change. I feel like it's too many followers and not enough leaders. That's a very, very important thing. You see, in our industry, unfortunately, mm -hmm. ass kissing is the number one thing before yeah. you get to before you get to being a witch. Uh, 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 when I say before you get to being a witch, because you know most of these people think that okay, when you kiss ass, mm -hmm. you get it. But I always believe that once you have the talent and the drive, you don't need you to don't kiss anyone. Yeah, you don't. You need understand? To kiss. Yeah. So talent and drive. Which one do you? Which one do you? Which one do you, would you pick on first? I would talent and drive. I would pick on drive. Like to say because drive I mean. builds talent. Yeah, drive builds talent because even if you're not the best singer, even if you ha if you have the drive, you will be determined to become the best. So you automatically be the best. Yeah. Have you ever been told maybe you were trying to pitch yourself to um to someone and someone said you you cannot sing. Have you ever been told you could not sing? And what did you do? Um, you know, with me, I've never, I've never pitched myself to anyone because the way I just came in the industry was basically like, yes, yes, yes. So I didn't really like come out and like to go to like five different labels and get turned down. I just came under one and then Ghanaians just accepted me. And then I just, you know, became, yeah. But of course there's people who wouldn't like me that would come and tell me you can't sing or you're not talented. Of course, people who just want to kill your energy. But I, I, I didn't get turned down to become, you know, a star. I didn't go through that phase. So you have a new management? Yeah. Yes. All right. So putting up that new management, what was going through your mind? You think is the right decision that you were taking? Um, so when it comes to my management, um, so it's a label and then of course me being managed, which is called, um, blown GH, but my management is something that me and my family put together. It's not like I went and went to a management agency. No. So it's more of like an inside thing. I don't have like a full management team. I have like, you know, a manager, one person managing me under the label that I'm under. Yeah. Is the label yours? No, it's not mine. No. Okay. So, if you were to do a collaboration today, if I was wake you up from, from sleep and say, Fantana, you have one wish, or you have, you have a, a card, one card, to play on a collaboration with anyone in the world, who would that be? One person. In, in the world? Yeah, in the world. One person. Oh, that's so hard. That's so hard. Okay, so <laughs> let's do it this way. In Africa, one person. You have, you have one card. One card. Mm, I mean, there's two. If I had one, if I had no, one. I, you have one card. Let's oh do Africa God. first. Okay, can one I do card. one boy, one girl? Can I do one no. male, one? One card. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, okay. Let, let's let's break it down. Let's do Nigeria first. One card in Nigeria. Okay, Nigeria. If I had a one card, one card. Tiwa Savage. 
Boom. She was savage. Ghana, one card. Ghana, one card. Um, um, I don't know. I don't, I don't, uh, who? I don't know. That one, there's, it's most, like, if it just happens, yeah. But, like, if you're talking okay. about, like, dream features, yeah, in Nigeria, she was savage. Yeah. That's one card for Nigeria. Africa, one card. <gasps> oh, my gosh. Africa, okay. one card. Diamond platinums. I knew you were going to mention diamond because How? I, can see, I, just... I can see I can see you guys doing. So when I was watching the, the one of your videos, um, uh, girls hit on girls. Mm -hmm. I can see diamonds colors. You know the, the diamonds colors. You know he likes colors and he's dancing. He likes yeah. Doing something beautiful. Yes, yes. Yeah. So I knew you were going to mention diamond somehow. Yeah, I diamond platinum. He's so talented. He's my favorite. Yeah. All right, we have a game. Are you ready to play? Uh, yes. Great. Whiskey or Davido? <laughs> Is that both? You have to take both. one. I have to take one. Yeah. So it's a game. I give you, I give you two, and you take one. Okay. Whiskey or um, Davido? I'm a Davido. I like Davido. So, yeah, Davido. Yeah, Davido. Sakodie or Shatawale? Shatawale. Horror flick or romance? <laughs> romance. Elevators or staircase? Elevator. <laughs> Gollywood or Bollywood? Nollywood or Bollywood? Gollywood or Bollywood? Where's, where's Gollywood? India or something? Gollywood is Gollywood is Ghana. Okay, Gollywood or Nollywood? Oh, um, um, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, both. Nollywood is Nigeria. Gollywood okay. is Ghana. So it's Gollywood Ghana. Okay, or Nollywood? I, okay, G Gollywood is yeah, Gollywood. Okay, jeans or mini skirts? Jeans. Heels or flats? Heels. Red or nude lipstick? Nude. <laughs> Simple look or glam look? <laughs> glam. On fleek or casual? I'm in between, but I would say on fleek. Yeah. Sandwich or hot dogs? Hot dogs. You look like going with like some dogs. Yeah. <laughs> Banku or Fufu? Ooh, Banku. Braids or wigs? Or weave on, sorry. Braids or weave on? Brains or weave on? Braids, braids. Oh, weave on, weave on, weave on. Okay. Spa visit or movies? Spa visit. Lemonade or iced tea? Iced tea. <laughs> Apple or Samsung? Apple. Skincare or sugar scrub? Skincare. Skin, I love skincare, sugar. sorry. Sugar scrub or, so, or sea salt? Oh, sugar scrub. All right. Phone call or text? Text. Spaghetti or noodles? Spaghetti. <laughs> Reading a book or poolside hangout? Poolside hangout. All right. You're currently being listened to on the biggest radio station in Lagos, 91.3 oh, wow. FM, Lagos Talks. So wow. what I want you to do is I want, I'm going to have the next 10 minutes for us to go into conversations that will help me introduce you to my radio audience. Okay. Hi, 93, 91.3 FM, Lagos Stocks. My name is Ruby Franklin. I have with me Fantana. Fantana, welcome to the building. Hi, thank you. All right, so this is for my listeners on radio. They've been listening all the while, but I just wanted to make sure that they know who's been, who's been talking. Oh, all right, wow. so, so yeah. So now the most important thing is I want you to give a young girl that's 15 out there trying to say, okay, you know, I want to get into the music industry. What's the advice you're going to give the young girl, Fantana? Um, 
be yourself, stay true to yourself. And no matter how many people tell you no, there's somebody out there that's going to tell you yes. So don't ever give up. All right. And for the entire Ghana, the, the entire Ghana music industry, what's the word for them? Let's start supporting each other more in this Ghana music industry. It seems like there's so much divide in the, in the, in, the in, in your industry. Mm -hmm. Why do you think th that persists? Because I feel like maybe people feel like they can't get to the top without bringing somebody else down. And that's the problem. You've been in the news lately. What's the problem? Oh, no, I, I'm always in the news. Maybe, I don't know, maybe because I posted a picture or something, but I don't know. <laughs> What's your relationship with Wendy Shea? Um, 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 we're on the same label, um, Rough Town Records. So. That's your relationship with her? Yes, yes. Is that something you guys are struggling? Um, no, for me, I'm, I just, um, <laughs> I just, you know I what, just, like, you're very, very, mind. you're very, very cheeky. So I'm trying to oh. find a way to get, get you to talk. Because when I ask you a question, you say, uh, when I ask you a question, you, you, you just turn it around. Uh-huh. When I ask you a question, you turn it around. So let's talk about your, your former manager, Bullet. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. Um, how did you meet him? So um, I've known him for like um, two years now, since 2017, 18, around there, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I can hear you, right? So I've known him for about two years. And um, like I said, I was in America before I moved to Ghana. And, you know, I told you it took some months of convincing my parents that this is what I want to do. So I finally convinced them that's what I want to do, made my move to Ghana, and then... Um, I was speaking to Bullet while I was in America, so we were ch chatting back and forth, talking. And um, at that time, um, sorry, um, my, you know, Ebony was alive at that time. Mary, so rest in peace. And then um, he had signed Wendy Shea before me. And then when I finally moved to Ghana, then I was like, okay, I'm ready to do this. And then I was the third person to be signed on Rough Town. I like something that you just did, and I like it. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you that la later. But oh. I want to say congratulations on everything. Nigeria is open for you. Um, Thank you. I want you to be the big, first biggest crossover artist to Nigeria. Biggest. Thank biggest you. Biggest yeah. crossover artist to Nigeria. Although, you, I don't want you to take Sakodi's place. Sakodi is dear. Sakodi, Sakodi as he is, is somewhere in my heart like this. Uh-huh. It's very, it's very dear to me. All right? So you, you, yeah. you can't take his place. Okay. Which is, yeah, but that... But I, I really want you to break into Nigeria. I want to say thank you, thank you for coming on the show. My name is Obi Franklin, as I said, and I have Fantana in the building. 91.3 Lagos Stocks. We had Fantana. Thank you, Fantana, for coming all the way from Ghana. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you, too, for having me. All right, bye. Bye. Okay. 91.3 Lagos Stocks. My name is Obi Franklin. That was Fantana, and we had... Um, we had Fantana all the way from Ghana very beautiful artist so we're in the building let's have a conversation I see Fantana Ami in the building Fantana Ami everywhere in the building right 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 so unfortunately we, unfortunately we couldn't get her excellency earlier um, on, on the show we're going to reschedule that interview I saw a lot of people really wanted to hear from, from Her Excellency. She's a very, she's a bulldozer. So a lot of people wanted to hear from her. But hey, it is what it is. We'll get her back sometime in the future soon. So...